I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You do not need complex trading strategies to make money trading. It's the facts. Before we get started, hit like, subscribe to our channel. It really help us out if you did that. And then this video, if you have any questions or comments, just make sure you put them below. So I said it, you don't need complexity to have a trading strategy. One can work. That's not complex. And we're going to talk about a 20 SMA with the RSI. And that is anything but complex. So we're going to use the trend following capability of the simple moving average for not only the trend, but for an average price of X periods. And the RSI, well, that's going to show us momentum of price over a set period. So when we combine these two indicators, it can actually make a backbone of a trading strategy. Now, Unlike a multiple moving average crossover strategy, we're just going to use one simple moving average set to 20 periods. So the SMA is going to give us an overall trend direction. And when you're using moving average, you're going to get price breaking and reclaiming the average. Now, if we just blindly used price crossing the average as an indication of trend, well, we're going to get whipsawed during the splash around the averages. So if we include swing levels into the strategy, it's actually gonna help ensure that we're also using price structure. So higher highs and higher lows for an uptrend as a confirmation of trend direction. Now the RSI, we're gonna use that to gauge momentum and it's going to include the use of the 50 level. Now the RSI is gonna show us that price is retracing against the trend and it's gonna help us determine a potential setup. So what's the setup? Well, the strategy is going to use the natural pullbacks that happen during trending markets. And we're going to gauge momentum as price attempts to reverse back in the direction of the trend. So on the left side of the chart at A, it's showing an uptrend. The price is above the 20 SMA and above a prior swing high. So we've determined trend. Price pulls back at B to the moving average around there. And price does break the average but it does not take out a prior swing low at C. So our uptrend is still intact. Now during the pullback, we have the RSI at D. It's moving below the 50 level of the indicator. We have to see that. So this is showing some weakness in the instrument. We then get a hook up in the RSI at E, and that signals that the setup is complete. Now there are a few methods to enter the trade once we have a setup confirmed. So once the RSI hooks back up, it doesn't have to cross 50 again, but a trader can then buy stop the high of the candle that turned the indicator to the upside, changing the direction of the indicator. When that happens, it's going to show momentum has, at least for that time, stepped back into the instrument in our direction. Another trade entry we can use is a break of the diagonal green trend line. This will take into account the momentum shift that we see by the RSI and a change in the rhythm of the instrument to the downside. We can also use a close back above the 20 SMA. Use that as your trend entry upon a close or using a buy stop entry above the high for a long trade. It's all up to you. We need a protective stop loss and no trade should occur without an understanding of where you are going to get out if price turns against you. Now, placing the stop under the most recent swing low for a long, that's a standard placement. We could also consider using a multiple of the average true range to place our stop. And some traders will even choose just to use the low of whatever candle they enter on for their stop when taking long trades. Now, the benefit of a closer stop loss is you get to have a higher position size. A trader that's going to use a distant stop loss location, you're going to give up some position size in exchange for allowing a bit more play in the price action. But as a trader, you have to know what you can tolerate. Okay, Some traders can't tolerate much price action against them. Right, They're going to use a closer stop, just get out. Other traders, they want to be proven wrong by a violation of price structure. Okay, We need profit targets. And listen, a three to one reward to risk ratio sounds great, right? But they're not always easy to achieve. And sometimes holding out for those could just turn into losing trades. The only thing that we can really know for certain is our entry price and barring any sort of slippage or stop loss, right? The profit is unknown. Now, some traders will use a 1.5 or a one reward to risk ratio, knowing that they're going to get a lot more 1.5 R targets than they ever will looking for three R's. The 20 SMA, that could be used as a trailing stop. And we could even use the 1.272 FIB extension target. On this chart here, the price target of the 1.272 FIB extension, the 1R profit target, they've all been hit. The 20 SMA trailing stop, that's still underway. You could also mix and match your profit targets by scaling out at 1R and then use the trailing stop feature 
the moving average or just look for an extension target, right? There's no best exit for profit, okay? You're going to miss out on some big runs. It's going to happen. And whatever you're going to use, it's something you have to be comfortable with, right? So there is no best. Here's a short trade. This is a daily currency chart. On the left, it's a legitimate long setup that rallied for about 160 pips before stalling at the moving average. And price breaks below the average. And it takes out a low, confirming the new downtrend in price. We see price rallying on the right side up to the moving average. The RSI hooks and a trade entry using a sell stop occurs. Price eventually does fall 200 pips to the lows. Now that price range on the left, that was actually confirmed using the moving average. Price is whipping around it. And you see the obvious tight consolidation that's happening. Right, that's happening between the extreme high and the extreme low on the left side there. You can see it. You don't always need an indicator to help you out with trading. This is Ethereum, and it gives us a less clean looking chart. And this is more indicative of conditions that we're gonna face as traders. Now those vertical black arrows, they're showing short trade examples due to price not breaking the swing high on the left of the chart, right? So we're still in a downtrend. So eventually we're gonna see a consolidation chart pattern. Price gets trapped between the swing high and the swing low extremes. The right side of the chart shows a swing high has been taken out. We have a short-term uptrend in play. And as of this chart, when this was taken, a long position would be the setup to be looking for. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the right side here. So a trader may have gotten long around that first consolidation. On the second consolidation, a trader would be long depending on how close their buy stop was set. So if an order is set and it's not triggered, we may find ourselves in a consolidation. So when that occurs, you will only want to look for trades when the extreme high or low of the consolidation is breached and you have RSI support, which means it's hooked in your direction. But remember, we have several entry methods to choose from and one may be better than another in certain conditions. Now listen, there's some nuances to trading that are only going to come from actual experience. You know, consider candle sizes and type of momentum in the pullback. You know, there's going to be some variables that are going to alter your approach. Now, for the most part, those will still be in your trading plan, but they're going to come from your own learned experience. This is a one-hour day trading time frame. It's going to give us more trading opportunities, but all are not going to be quality setups. So in the middle, we get a confirmed uptrend. We get a setup. So the actual setup candles, very small bodied. Right? It closed right in the middle of its range. That may be one that you skip. And when you see these small candles, we may also see the start of even smaller candles leading us into a consolidation. So in this case, you'd want to look to get long using the highest high of that range. Now you can see the gap up and chasing trades is never a good idea. So this could be a missed trade. But because we're on a lower time frame, we might get a shot at a trade quicker. We got a pull back to the SMA. The RSI dipped below 50. Again, we got a small candle. It's very similar to the one that we skipped earlier. So what we do, we look at the trend line break entry techniques. That gets us into a position. And this chart here is up almost 4%. So if I was to summarize this, you know, you're going to use a 20 SMA for a pullback location. And along with support and resistance levels, you're going to determine the trend. So we're going to need to see a swing level break to confirm the trend, right? So until that happens, we're going to take trades in the direction of the current trend regardless of price breaking the moving average. RSI, that's going to show us weakness against the trend. And when it's hooked back in the direction of the trend, we get a confirmation of an entry signal. But remember, it's got to break 50 as part of the pullback. There are several ways, conservative and aggressive, to enter these trades. I prefer trend line breaks, especially if we're in a complex correction. Setting stops and targets... They're going to be unique to each trader. Okay, We all have different tolerances with risk, different tolerances with profits. So you need to find what works for you and works with your understanding of trading. The final words on this, it's a simple strategy. It uses the natural evolution of price. You can quickly scan many instruments to see if price is close to the moving average. And the RSI is on the opposite side of 50 level. It's an easy scan. Adding more indicators, I know some of you will want to. It's going to add complexity. However, having rules surrounding the consolidations and the candle types, that can actually add to the performance. If you're interested in this strategy, I really suggest going through a lot of charts on your preferred time frame. You may have some questions. If you do, pop them below and I will respond to them. Again, I really appreciate if you like this video, subscribe to our channel and we'll talk to you soon.